Okay, in this video, this tutorial video, I will be showing how to make a simple character in Maya and to rig this character so it can move like a marionette puppet. And then in a second video, I will then show how to animate this character and then turn it into a movie. So the first thing we need to do because we're gonna uh, animate a character is we need to create a folder structure so that Maya knows where to put uh, the animation when we're done. And it's very important that you do this step um, in Maya so that Maya doesn't get lost and you don't get lost and things won't uh, start acting funny. So it's a pretty easy step. Under File, you go to Project Window. This opens up this Project Window uh, window. And you, you click on the New button and give it a name. Uh, I'm just going to call it um, Rigged Character. And you may, might not want to put spaces in your name. Maybe it's okay to do it, but it may not be because sometimes Maya is not very good with spaces. So just kind of have everything as one, one long word or use an underscore if you have to. Um, I don't know if this is a problem it used to be, but it, maybe it's still, I don't know. So don't, don't use spaces. Um, so create your name. You can put it on your desktop or anywhere you like. If you click on this folder, you can uh, direct it to where it's going to go. And what it's going to do is it's going to create this folder with this name, just like I put here, and a bunch of subfolders inside of it. And in those subfolders, it'll put things that need to be put, and it'll know where to find them later. So you just hit accept. And that becomes your project window and everything knows where to be saved. Okay, so now let's create this character. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an iPhone because that's a pretty familiar object. And then I'm gonna rig that and turn into a walking iPhone and turn into a character. So first let's model this iPhone. So I'm gonna start by just clicking on uh, the cube of the poly modeling. And that'll put a cube in the middle of my screen right here and I'm going to then widen it with my scale tool and change its height and try to get more looking like the body of a phone it looks uh, maybe a little wider looks pretty good now, maybe I want to smooth these edges because right now it looks like a box and it's not very phone-like. Um, if I click Mesh Smooth right now, um, it sort of works except because I don't have... Well, here's what it does. It makes this weird shape. It smooths it, but it tries to average... Um, all the points of that box and it ends up making this very strange shape. So what we need is more of these points, these points, these intersection points, which are called vertices on this box. And then it'll start to look, it'll keep the box shape and just smooth, the, smooth, smooth out the edges. So in order to make more of these lines and intersection points, I can go to my attribute editor and actually, when, when you make the cube, when it, the cube I just made, you can also, as a shortcut, here's your subdivisions, width, height, and depth. You could put new numbers in here right now if you want to, if, if that window is open. If I put a six in there, you see it's put a bunch of lines in there. Um, if this number is not in front of you right now, you can go to your attribute editor and find the same operation here. So the attribute is this tab on the right. And you have to go one tab in the polycube one, which is the same thing that's listed right here. And that number six then is right here on my subdivisions width. And I can move these sliders now and give it some more subdivisions, which will create, and you can see that the numbers are appearing here as well. And again, I don't know if this is gonna come up for you or not. Generally it does, uh, but this is not the other way to get to it. Um, so here I've made more subdivisions, and so now it's made more of these intersection points, these vertices. And now when I hit Smooth, Mesh Smooth, it keeps the shape of the box much more and just sort of smooths out all the edges, and that's kind of more what I'm after. Um, and also we're going to need all these um, 
vertices, these intersection points, because those are going to be the points where you can distort your model and make it bend so it looks like it's walking uh, and doing things that characters would do. So you have to have lots of these, and if you have not enough, it won't have any place to bend. And then if you have too many, it'll bend too sharply and look like a crease, like, you're, like a folded paper, and that's not good either. This is a pretty good amount right here. Now I'm going to make the screen. So I'm going to click on another cube right here, and it's going to put a cube in the middle. It's kind of inside there, and I'm going to put that out where I can see it. And I can do the same thing. I can use my scale tool to stretch it out. Um, and let me also show you another way of doing this. In that same, this is now polycube two. It'll just keep going down the line with three, four, and five as you make new polycubes. You can also control the width, height, and depth by these sliders just above the subdivision. So here's another way of doing it. I'll just move my sliders right here. And there's the width. Uh, here's the depth. And I want to make the height less than one because it's uh, doesn't need to be this thick. Uh, I can make it like 0.4 perhaps, something like that. And let's see if I've got it where I want it to be. I think I want to move it up just a little bit. So I'm going to make this kind of old school with a home button so it's a little bit more recognizable um, as a phone. And I'm going to drop it inside of the body so it just kind of sticks up a little bit so that we can see that there's going to be a screen. And again, it's mostly for recognizability. The screen doesn't really stick up. Um, and now I'm going to make those subdivisions because even though I don't need to smooth this down, I need those subdivisions by moving these sliders here to make it bendable. so that I can later animate it. I need to have places for it to bend. And so without those bending points, it won't animate very well. It'll, well, it'll just move around without bending. Okay, so that's pretty good. Again, I don't wanna to put too many. And now I'm gonna make a, a home button, even though that's kind of old school, um, it'll make it sort of more recognizable as an iPhone. And I'm gonna do that by cutting in into the surface. So here's how I'm gonna cut into the surface here. I'm going to create a sphere, like in my poly modeling menu, I'll create a sphere right here. And it puts the sphere right there. And I'm gonna use a sphere as a cutting tool. I'm gonna to use it as like a, a saw to bevel into the surface right there, like that. The problem is right now, if I use it in this shape that it's in right now, or in the size that it's in, it's gonna make a really deep um, home button, and I don't want it to be that deep. So I just, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this much bigger with my scale tool, and then just use the tip of the ball so it's not so deep. I think that'll come out a little better. So I, I wanna make the size of the home button uh, but not so deep. So I'm just using the tip of the ball. Here's how I'm going to use this as a cutting tool now. This is something called Booleans. This is pretty useful. I'm going to click on first the body that I want to um, have left behind after the Boolean. In other words, my main object. And then I shift click on the cutting tool and you have to do it in that order. You can't do it opposite or else you get the opposite effect and it'll leave the ball and then use the body as the cutting tool. So I don't want that. So shift on what you want to keep first and then your cutting tool second with the shift click. And then under mesh, I can go to Booleans and put difference and it makes the difference. It subtracts it out. And there it made my home button cut into the model. So this is a really good way to make, uh, you can use shapes to cut into other shapes and uh, make models. I'm gonna move the screen up just a touch. That's not quite there, not quite touching it too much. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, now let's get some different colors so that we can tell that there's a screen on there at all, because it's all white on white right now. So in order to um, give something a color, 
you can right click on it just hold down your right click button on whatever you want to color and you'll see this menu right here and this menu does lots of things um, but one of the things is we can assign it a new material down here and you get this window that pops up with different kinds of materials and there's only a couple of these you need to really know about the Lambert has no reflection, the Blinn is shiny, and the Fong is sort of a different kind of shine. But they're both shiny, one's a little bit duller. So really just those three are pretty good. Lambert, Blinn, and Fong are pretty good. I want this to be shiny, like the screen. Um, maybe I'll take the Fong, so I'll click that. And as soon as you click it with a new material in your attribute editor, it'll immediately give you this whole menu right here, including color. And you can click on the color box and assign it any color you like. I'll make it black and maybe the phone I'll make super white it's so a little bit gray right now so I can right click on it and say assign new material um, I'll also make it pretty shiny and click on the color and go super white so it's a little bit whiter than it was now I've got these two colors and I like that that looks pretty good now, the only thing I'm going to want to do now is I'm going to want to make the screen and the phone become one continuous shell so that it animates better and the screen won't poke out of the, the phone sometimes. And I'll show you what I mean when I do this. I'm going to go inside the model. And you remember that I dropped the uh, screen into the phone a bit. Well, it's still there. Here I am inside the model now. Here's the inside view of the model. And there is the screen sticking into the model. And when I start to animate it, it may poke out the side sometimes if I bend things too much. So I want to get rid of all that inside geometry. So the way you do this, pretty easy. Um, it's another Boolean. I've clicked on the screen. I'll shift click on the, uh, the model. It doesn't matter which order in this particular case. And under mesh Booleans, when we were last time we hit that difference, another option is union. So union will turn it into one continuous shell. So you can't really see any difference now, but if you look inside the model, you'll see that now it's completely hollow. So it doesn't have that interior geometry any longer. So great, this is ready to rig up. So Maya likes to keep a lot of these options open and available to you. In other words, if you wanted to change where that home button is still or change things around with this union screen right here, and we need to get rid of all of that so it doesn't keep that in its, in its math, in its calculations, uh, because otherwise it can mess up the animations later as it tries to calculate too many things. So in order to do that, we do this thing called edit, delete all by type history. So we're, we're gonna delete our history and it's gonna get rid of all those options. It's gonna say, okay, you like what you got and you're gonna keep what you got and you're ready to go from here. So it's important that you do this when you, before you start animating, before you start rigging, because it can be a problem if you don't. So again, edit, delete all by type, history. So now it's, now it's gonna make it so that you can't, you can't go back. I mean, you can still hit uh, Command Z to go back in time. Um, and then it will bring the history back, but it's not going to bring that into the future calculations. Okay, so now I'm going to create a rig, which is kind of like a framework for a marionette. That's the next step. And since I want this thing to walk on the grid right here, I'm going to stand it up. So I'm going to take my rotate tool, and I'm going to drag this ring right here so it begins to stand up. Now I want it to stand up exactly. I want it exactly 90 degrees standing up. So I can look at my channel box right here, this tab on the right. And there is the number that I just rotated it. See, there's the rotate X 95 something. If I rotate it you know, differently, it changes that number. Um, and so I want it to be exactly 90. So I can just put the number 90 in there, hit return, and it'll be exactly standing straight up. And that's what I want. And now I'm going to put it on top of the grid because I'm going to want it to uh, walk across the grid in our animation later. Okay, so let's rig this thing. So modeling is with the menu that we were just using and that creates sort of a set, a menu set at the top that's really good for modeling. 
And they divide the menu sets. There's different ones for different things you might want to do. Rigging is what we're going to be doing. So we're going to go to the next one down is rigging. And that'll change some of the menu sets up here. And what we need is a skeleton because the skeleton, we're going to make bones and joints and that's going to be our rig. So you, when you draw bones and joints, we're going, to meet, we're going to create joints in a moment. It has to draw it on a grid. And right now, if I was to make them now, it would try to draw them on this bottom grid. And that's not where I want it. I want it up here with the phone. So I want to make the grid be also standing up. And the way you do that is you can hit your space bar for a moment, go to four views. And you see that with the four views comes different orientations of the grid. And I want this orientation right here because that's standing up along with the model. So I'm going to hover my mouse in that window and also hit the space bar again quickly. Just tap it. And that becomes the big window so I can see what I'm doing. Great. Now I'm going to make bones and joints inside of this. Um, it's a little bit narrow. I think I'll stretch it just a little. Yeah, it looks better. Made the circle a little bit odd, but that's fine. Um, and what I want to do is uh, put my bones and joints in there, but I won't be able to see them because, uh, well, they're going to be inside. And in order to see them, I need to go shading x-ray joints because I'm going to make bones and joints. And so that way it'll, x it'll be like an x-ray machine and I'll be able to see my bones and joints. I suppose I can go to, um, I can make it so I don't see the model itself. I would just see the wireframe of the model, but I'd rather just use x-ray joints and that way I'll know where my model is too. So now I'm going to go skeleton, create joints. And that's going to make my tool, you see it becomes like a, um, a cross or an X. Um, it makes it a joint tool. So I'm going to click in the very center and make my first joint. Click, makes a joint. And that's, that's called your root joint. The first one you make is the root joint. Now I want to make a hip joint. So I'm going to click out here on the side and it makes two joints, and I've got two joints, and this triangle means that there's a bone in between. It just means a connection between one joint and the next. And now I'm gonna make the top of the leg, click, the knee, and the foot. Now if I wanted to make the other foot on this side right now, if I was to try to do this right now, it would connect it to the foot that's on this side, and that's not where I want it what I want to happen. I want to make another joint chain from the middle again. So let me go back in time. And so here's how you, here's how you go back up the joint chain so that you can make um, more joints that are still connected the way you want to. Use your up arrow. So the up arrow will go to the preceding joint. So I'm going to make the arm right here. I'm going to make uh, the equivalent of the shoulder the elbow and the hand. So the same way I did the leg, with like sort of a little joint, an elbow or a knee joint, and then the last one for like the foot or the hand. And then I'm using the up arrow again, and this time go all the way back to the root so that I can do the same thing on the other side. So here's the hip, top of the leg. It's very important that you do these top of the leg and the shoulder or it won't animate very well. Uh, this I just know from experience. It will try to make the, the arm and the leg uh, attached to each other. We want them to separate. So they animate, an, a, animate individually. There's the foot. Here's my up arrow. And I go back up and make the other side. Shoulder, elbow, hand. Again, don't forget the shoulder. Very important, and don't forget the top of the leg. And now I'm gonna hit enter. And that is my rig. It's a pretty simple rig. So I'm gonna um, click on the screen again with my space bar. And I'll go back to my perspective view right here. Click on the space bar again, I'm hovering over the perspe perspective view. And I can see now that my rig is right where I want it, right inside the model. And again, you can see how you know I'm, I'm only seeing part of the rig and the rest is obscured by the model. If I go shading x-ray joints, I'll see all of them. So anyway, that's good to see. So 
Now what I need to do is attach this model to this rig so that when I move these joints, it'll take the model with it. So I just clicked nothing, but if you want to click your rig again, you click the very root joint and it'll click all of them. If I was to click one of these other joints, it would only uh, select that joint. If you hit the root joint, it selects everything. Then shift click on the mesh or the model, shift click. So rig, then model. And then under skin, you say bind skin. And it binds it. And so now, if I was to click on one of these joints and use my rotator, it will take the model with it pretty evenly. Because we didn't use too many um, subdivisions. We used really just enough so we don't get a big crease, um, but enough that it can bend. I'll go back up to normal and say, like, let's say I click on this joint and do the same thing. Now it bends it from there. And if I click on the root joint, uh, I could rotate it or I can move the whole model. I can use my move tool and it's going to move the entire model. So now we are ready to make this model walk across the grid. And that will be the next video.